I don't know why I take it out on you guys. It's Ready? usually me. Burning to death like a marshmallow. Ooh, he's human some more. Can we say barbecue anyone? You're under arrest. Arrest me, daddy. God, detective, we've got another case on our hands. Welcome back to another Unsolved Mystery, Unsolved Case Files, featuring your bits, Stephanie Sue. I'm your detective for today's show, and um, for the next 48 hours, for the next dateline, for the next, what, who are you? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then I've got my wonderful partner here. What, what are you? <laughs> detective, um, fuck. Detective fuck. In, okay, he gets real deep inside the case to understand Woo! what's going on. Uh, hi. <laughs> Where were you last night, huh? So we've got this because I'm going to be making a murder wall right here. I'm not going to be murdering people on this wall, but I'm going to be putting the possible suspects of this murder case up onto this wall, and I will be pointing at them as I go through this case that was with you. This is my idea. This is your idea? Yeah, so I get to hold so it. So you get to point. Yes. What if you point at the wrong people? That's okay. <laughs> no, it's not okay. It's okay. So we've got another one of these unsolved case files. I did this before, and you guys wanted it to turn it into a series, so we've got series number two, and I read the reviews on this one, and it says that it is a lot more climactic than the other one, so hopefully that is true. We've got a bunch of shit in here. I mean, I don't even know. I think we're gonna sort through this real quick because look at all the paperwork I have to go through. I mean, this one's weird. I think someone dies. She's a Jane Doe. We don't even know who the victim is. We don't know who she is. What's her name? What's her story? Where is she from? Who is she dating? You know, like, what's her Tinder profile? We don't know any of it. It's gonna be a long night, so get tuned. Get tuned. <laughs> go get your fucking radio tuned because it's about to be intense. Now, let's gently open up the evidence folder like all the cops do. Evidence always gets tampered with, you know what I mean? Can you be more professional? What is that? Does my eye look big? Yeah, it looks giant. <laughs> <laughs> Why did it give us this? That means we'll have to look at something very tiny. Oh, okay, put on your pants. <laughs> What's your name? My name's Stephanie. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Arrest me, daddy. Do it. Anything? Anything? No. <laughs> so we're gonna go through all of this, organize our brains, put up some pictures on our murder wall, and we'll be right back. Detective? Detective Mangobot? How are you? <sighs> I'd be better if we got all the murderers off these dirty streets. Wow, you're so cool. <laughs> <clears throat> Finish the line? What line? Oh, we need you. What's the case? Do you want to brief? You want me to brief you on the case, detective? Yes. Okay, I <laughs> can do right. that. So today's story, today's entire case starts because we found the body of Jane Doe. So this is Jane Doe. She's the missing victim. Well, she's not missing. She's dead. I'm sorry. This is fake, by the way. <laughs> okay. So this is Jane Doe. This is who we found murdered on this entire island. Now, according to the island, there is only one little rehab facility there. It's a private island, and it's run by Dr. Kendra. She is the CEO, but she is also not a suspect. She was not on the she island at the time the of the murder. She owns the company. Yeah, she owns the company. And then the security, who also was not on the island at the time that this all took place, but kind of runs it on a day to day basis, is by the name of Ari. Look, he looks mean. Look at that stash. He looks like he hides weapons inside of his mustache. That's the security officer. He has a dog by the name of Scout that will also help him look through the island. And then this producer, his name's Steven. We're going to talk about him later, okay? So it all starts with Jane Doe. Now, these are the five people who were on the island at the time of her murder. So these are the only five suspects that we have. Now, all four of these people, Ava B. Lawrence, Jack Danner, Rob Knox, and Paula May are patients of this rehabilitation center. So Ava's addicted to cocaine. He's an alcoholic. He's obsessed with gambling, and she has a food addiction. Now, Christopher King is the counselor for these patients. So he's the addiction counselor, and he also was a former addict of weed and prescription pills and these are the five suspects that could have possibly killed Jane Doe now we have a couple of questions which is first of all how did she get on this private island because I mean we don't even know like how did she she doesn't live
live there. She's not a patient. Nobody has any record of her. She was not supposed to be on this island. She's not a new patient. She doesn't, we don't even know if she knows any of these people, right? So how did she even get on the island? Secondly, who is she? And why would one of these five people want to murder her. So that's our murder wall. Now let me tell you the full story. Monday, April 23rd of 2001, I've got my notes because I wanted to make sure that we get to the bottom of this crime. At 5.37 in the morning, Ari, the security officer, he makes a phone call to the Del Fuego police, or not the Del Fuego police, but like the local fire and police department, right? And they says, listen, there's a fire in cabin number two of our rehabilitation center and you need to come get it. And so the fire department, they arrive and it's already been extinguished. So so the fire has been cut down by the rain, right? So there's no more fire, but they're looking at the damage. And what they find in cabin number two, underneath the cross space, was the body of Jane Doe. Which is this right here. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. He said, dun, dun. She was obviously badly burnt. We have narrowed her down to five possible Jane Doe's. This because is there's list. a teeth gap in yeah. between. So she has a tooth gap. So we've got five missing persons reports right here. Five possible females that this could be who are all aged 17 through 24, right? And the fire department, they realize that there's heavy signs of arson. It looks like someone had started this fire just to get rid of the body because there was a gas can and a lighter found out at the body's location. <laughs> right there and it gets more interesting so like i said there's only five people on the island at the time that could be suspects now there's also five potential jane doe identities right the fire department when they arrived they said 90 percent of the cabin had been destroyed so any forensics any like fibers any fingerprints anything like that has been completely destroyed the fire originated on the body meaning that they poured gasoline all over jane's body and then the autopsy showed something very very interesting Okay, this is what the burned cabin looked like the autopsy showed that she almost died instantly from a brutal force to her sternum which I've talked about this in a mukbang before is incredibly difficult to break right and so her sternum was broken which then resulted in several of her ribs breaking which then resulted in a ruptured aorta which then resorted in her collapsed lungs and then she went to cardiac shock and she died and this happened about one to two hours before the fire had started yeah, you really got to the bottom of it, huh? I got to the bottom of it all. And so they wow. also suspect that she is somewhere between the height of 5'9 and 6'1, 90 to 140 pounds, and she's got a gap in her two front teeth. So let's talk about this rehabilitation center because it sounds a little bit fishy to me. What do you mean this is a private island? Is Jeffrey here? So Los Angeles is here, okay? The island is here. It's about 12 miles away from the coast of Southern California. And as you can see, it says that this rehabilitation center is an addiction rehab for the rich and the famous. So primarily, you've got a lot of TV executives, you've got regular executives, and you've got a lot of famous people going here. Why? Because it's very, very remote. No one can really go, paparazzi is not allowed, and it's very expensive, right? So Kendra Scott runs the place, but she wasn't there, so she's not a suspect, okay? And who are these people? These people, we're gonna get into it. They also all get a cabin of their own. Now it gets weirder. So the gas can and the lighter that was found on her body belonged to Christopher, the counselor. Now witnesses do say that he left the gas can and the lighter in a public area after he started a bonfire for their community building activity prior to this. So technically, anyone could have taken it. Now let's talk about Christopher King, okay? He's a suspicious one. So very Chris, suspicious. Very suspicious. Very, so he's very the addiction suspicious. counselor. He's been working at this rehabilitation center for about five years, okay? And he lives in cabin number two. The one that got burned. Which is weird because how do you not know if your cabin's being burnt to the ground, Christopher? How do you not know? Sorry. He's over there. How it's not as strong the second time around, you know? And so he's also a former addict, and he this he says it helps him relate to the patients. Potentially still an addict. Yes, because they also found him writing a bunch of poems while he was smoking weed and possibly taking prescription pills that he says that he takes because he hurt his back. But here's the thing. He doesn't have any prescriptions on his record. Mm -hmm. Nobody prescribed him anything. So how did he get these pills? It gets even stranger, right? So he has a poem called... Let me pull this out because this poem is <laughs> something else, okay? So he has a poem called The Fire King. 
coincidence or not? Mm -hmm. So it says a poem by C.A. King. A burning ember from the past gave me warmth but left too fast. I long to feel that heat again in those flames eternity spends. Uh, that is what this soul desires, to roast in such delightful fires. I'm just saying, if that's not evidence, I don't know what it is. I'm kidding, that is very Yeah, he's sketchy. Evidence. I don't like it. Yeah, his last sentence. It had to end with scorching flares. For consequence, I have no cares. You're dead to me. True love smothered. You are, in fact, just like my mother. So he's got mommy issues. And I'm just saying, I never trust a man with no mommy but, issues. Okay, so you should tell them, yes. right? Right now, it seems like there's a lot of evidence pointing to this guy. So this guy is, I wanted to start with him because he's so suspicious. So he has this poem, first of all, called I'm the Fire King. And then we also learned that he does a show called Sally, something Donahue show, where he's like a TV counselor for addicts, which mm -hmm. I just don't trust people like that. I mean, what kind of good medical advice could they give? right and so he does these shows but here's what's very interesting he had a little bit of a scuffle with another employee recently which, which is her name right is here. Maria on so, the missing girls report yes Maria was the housekeeper right of this like the main facilities of this rehabilitation center and she decided that she was going to alert Ari the security of Christopher's naughty actions she had seen him shuffling through the little medicine cabinet where they take the confiscated goods of all of the patients like if you come to the island and you're trying to stuff you know I don't know a joint in your bra like they're going to put it in this little cabinet right and she saw him go through the cabinet and take a bunch of drugs and put it in his pocket so she tells the security but he says no 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 that's not how the story went. I, Christopher, saw Maria going through that cabinet and I told her she's gonna get fired and so she decides to tell on me first. But guess what? The security officer ended up finding a bunch of pills inside of her purse. So she was fired and she's been missing ever since. So from what we gather right now, yeah. it seems like Christopher killed her. Yeah. Because she was, she is missing right mm -hmm. now. And her, her description matches. Yeah, and here's the interesting thing. The police theory is that either A, they were in love. They were having like a workplace affair. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to get rid of her for some reason. Maybe he found somebody new. Or she didn't love him back and he got mad. He got angry. How dare you not love me? I'm on TV, right? Or theory number two is the fact that maybe she was blackmailing him because maybe he was using again, which would really just tank his career. He can no longer be an addiction counselor if he's going back to using. So those are the two possible theories. And it seems from everybody else, all of these just witnesses. So you have have a bunch of witnesses. Ari, the security officer, doesn't really like him. Nobody really likes him. Mm -hmm. Nobody's like, this is the best counselor that ever existed. The only person that likes him is Kendra Scott, the CEO. And that's about it. Not Kendra Scott. Who the fork is Kendra Scott? So why was he not in his cabin? He said that he went to the main house to go look through patient files. Mm -hmm. But when the fire was being put out and when someone had stormed into the place to save him, he was seen coming from the other direction that was not the main house. Mm -hmm. All of the patients said that he wasn't walking from the direction where the main house is. Yeah. And so he's kind of unaccounted for. He just said, well, then I went to like go hang out and de-stress from the job. He's lying. He's lying. He's but lying. I don't also don't believe it's him because that would be too easy. So right now we just read the first page. Mm -hmm. Everybody say it's him, but that there's no case then. It would be way too obvious. I guess this is true. Mm -hmm. What about the other four? Let's move on to Paula May. I think she's a little suspicious. Okay, some people don't think she's a little suspicious, but I, I do. I may have misplaced her file already. Ah, here we go. <laughs> so Paula May is really suspicious because as you can see, she is right next to this Wendy the waitress who is a waitress at the location. So a lot of employees, what happens is that the security guard will actually take them back to the mainland in California when the night is over. Like they don't spend the night on this private island, just the patients and the counselor does. The security does not even spend the night. He does one last routine check and then he leaves on a boat called the Captain Hook, right? And so she was one of the the people to leave with him but not before some shit went down okay so Paula May right here she is a beautiful model beautiful model until she hit 30 years old and then they stopped calling she wasn't getting any jobs anymore and she was like why am I not getting jobs and she was getting mad and she was like it's almost like when I turn 30 I should just go roll over in my grave and go die what is this 
so she got mad and she starts eating and then she ate too much so then she gained about 40 pounds in four months now that doesn't really seem like a lot especially because she was very very thin to begin with and she still is thin but it's because she was using food as a source to replace this emotion which then causes it to become an addiction right and so she's just eating 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 and then the paparazzi was like did you hear about that supermodel that gained a bunch of weight like let's go photograph her so then they keep photographing her and then she became agoraphobic so she doesn't freaking go outside anymore she's like I'm not going outside to get photographed and be laughed at and so then she stays in her house all day when all of a sudden she's like you know what because I can't leave the house here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get Postmates I'm gonna get Uber Eats I'm gonna get Instacart I'm gonna get these people to deliver the groceries into my house and that's exactly what she does but what she didn't know was one of the paparazzi had disguised themselves as one of these delivery people and so they sneaked up into her house with all these bags of groceries and they were like, oh my god, like, let me just put them in the kitchen for you. They're so heavy. And she was like, thank you so much. Like, you're so nice. Nobody's nice to me anymore. Wow. And so they come in and then out of that bag, they pull out a camera and start taking pictures of her in her own damn house. And so she grabbed the camera and whacked her in the face with it, breaking the paparazzi's nose. Woo! Woo! And then she gets arrested. And then she was like, I need to battle this addiction. Her husband also left her when she gained weight to go marry someone skinny. Any disgusting scum sorry so she shows up here and her main thing was she loves Del Fuego Island why because it's an island no paparazzi until she arrives at the restaurant and this waitress decides because she's a big fan big 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 biggest fan to take a little picture of her mm. and that's when she saw her and was like are you fucking paparazzi and said give me your phone or I'm gonna break your mouth or something like that okay I'm paraphrasing a little bit so then she starts crying and she's like oh my god like this is so bad mm -hmm. and then she goes back and she is still waitressing because she's professional and she's good at her job and then she spills a bunch of potato salad on Jack Danner. Jack Daniel. I want to say Jack Daniels too, but mm -hmm. it's Jack Danner. But it's uh -huh. interesting because he his addiction is alcohol. So Jack Daniels. I love how they're so clever with the names. I know. <laughs> I think they do it so you don't forget. Yeah. And so that's her story. Her alibi is that she was in her room sleeping in her cabin when all of a sudden she heard a woman scream, fire! And she ran outside and saw cabin number two on fire. And it seems like she has the hot for Christopher because everyone was like, what do we do? He's probably in there burning to death like a marshmallow. Ooh, he's human some more. Can we say barbecue anyone? <laughs> and she was like, I'm gonna save him. And so she busted through cabin number two's door and then he wasn't in there. So it mm. seems like she has a little bit of crush, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, Paula May, we see you. We see you, Paula May. I don't know where this little <laughs> detective thing's coming from. Anyway, so then that's the story of Paula May and Wendy, the waitress. I Suspect. feel bad for her. You feel bad for her? Yeah. You don't think she's one? Doesn't seem like it. So people, so the police thinks that he killed, she killed some paparazzi who snuck onto the island, right? Mm -hmm. So the theory, yeah, the theory is that paparazzi, thin and paparazzi, snuck onto the island and then she was like BOOM and then killed them mm. I don't know why I'm laughing mm. Rob Knox is the CEO of Safety Net so they do a bunch of safety related sh**. Right? Webcam. They Cam. do webcams. I don't trust him. Okay, they do webcams. You trust this guy with your webcam? I wouldn't. So um, Rob Knox owns this company and he's been owning this company for quite some time, right? But here's the thing. The company is incredibly fast at growing. It's just going up and up and up and up and the stock prices are going up and up and up and up. But the company is facing bankruptcy because this dude loves to gamble. His poison is poker. So he's been gambling all of the company's money away and they're about to file for bankruptcy. So he's like, I can't do this. I can't lose everything. And so he got onto this island. I almost said snuck up on this island because that's kind of what happened. He comes to this island to get rid of his gambling addiction. Now it's very, 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 very interesting because um he's already changed his name before. The police have a pickle with this guy because they said, listen, we looked into your record and we found out that you changed your name because you at one point lived in Georgia. And in Georgia, we talked to the police, you had a messy, messy divorce with your wife. She ends up leaving you for an attorney and her new boyfriend the attorney Boofang, he sues the shit out of you and takes all of your money now you ain't got no money and so you decide to do some poker business some little gambling business and then you just you get in too deep you get into some shit, 
and you also allegedly have a friend that you borrowed money from by the name of Max. Now, Max turns up dead one day. And guess who is the main suspect? Robert Knox. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't really have any evidence against him, so then he ends up just changing his name, moving away to California, and presuming life as normal. So they think, they think, listen, the first time you got into gambling, someone ends up dead. The second time, someone ends up dead. Is it a coincidence? I think maybe it's. And now, who is this? This is Audrey Collins, a reporter. So she saw him at the marina while they were about to leave mainland of California to go to Del Fuego Island, and he's this waiting. This is where they yeah. took a picture at the... The marina. Look at them. What a beautifully photoshopped photo. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dog yeah. of the uh, consular. I definitely think that they hired someone on Fiverr to do that. And so this you know, reporter, she got word that this heavy tech CEO said that he was going to protect your house and your belongings when he can't even protect his own money from himself. So she was like, I'm gonna go investigate. This was her first day on the job working for this gossip website. So her boss was like, you better f***ing go. And so she goes and she was just so excited. She was like, I don't even, I just wanna, I don't even know what to say. And so randomly she just runs up to him and goes, are you the CEO of SafetyNet and do you have a gambling addiction? And he grabs her by the wrist so much that it hurt her. And he pulls her in close and he says, you don't know who you're messing with. You bury this paper. Or I'll bury you and then let her go and so many people witnessed it now thankfully she is not missing okay so it can't be her but maybe it was her colleague maybe it was somebody else maybe, maybe it was, it's a different report yeah or maybe it was someone he owed money to that he decided to murder now let's I talk just about found something yes. right now but I don't know if it's any useful information so there's this little magnifying thing right as you guys can see <laughs> so I've been just kind of looking at these photos that's in here I did see this little number I don't know if it means anything Thing. So this is the um, the cabin that was burned, and there's a number here. It's right there. I believe it reads CF A zero six nine. What is that? Wait, CF. <laughs> Okay, hold on, wait. I know this number. Give me give me all the pictures. Give me all the pictures. Oh, I thought it was gonna be something like this. It's a date. <laughs> Are we supposed to know six, what that nine? means? Oh, oh my no, god, no, no, no. six nine. I they're doing it! All of them! They're all doing it! They're all smashing! Are they? I mean, really, honestly, they could be because we don't know what happens in Hollywood and on these little islands that these Hollywood people go to. We know about the last island and... I don't fucking know. Um, oh, that did yeah, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what was that number supposed to do? Uh, Moving on! Jack Danner! He is an alcoholic. He was drinking and driving. He just, he tried to smuggle in literally a bag full of liquor until Ari confiscated it. He does a lot of, um, what do you call it? Lots of martial arts. Pa, 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 knock a bitch out. <laughs> Sorry. Pa, pa, and I'll do it again. I don't know why I take it out on you guys. It's right? usually me. <laughs> <laughs> and so he decides to try to smuggle in alcohol as if this is just another party on, you know, J.E.'s Island. <laughs> you feel what I mean? Honey. 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 You'll be f***ing dead one day and I'm not a part of it. <laughs> I'm not a part of it. He said, I'm not a part of it. <laughs> and so he tries to smuggle in a bunch of liquor because he thinks it's about to be a good time. But Ari, the security dog, security guard and his dog, sorry, he finds it and he's like, mm -mm, I already knew, I already f knew. And so he takes it. Now he goes up to him, grabs him by the throat and pushes him up against the wall and says, you give it back or you're dead. And he was like, this is crazy because first of all, listen here, listen, listen. I have been doing martial arts and Krav Maga and CrossFit for, I don't know, 30 years now. And for someone to push me up against a wall like that takes strength, uh -huh. which means he could be capable of killing a petite woman. Sure. But who would it be? Cocktail waitress from the mainland that what? he invited to the island for some time. But why did he kill her? Because he wasn't getting no sexy time. She turned her, him down? Yeah. So he killed her. A very weird reason. Maybe he's so drunk that he was like, bah, bah. Okay. I mean, these are the police theories. Yeah. I'm not saying they're the smartest kids on the block right now. Did they close the case before they even found out who she was? I'm just saying. <laughs> LAPD. This is a fake case, by the way. <laughs> so I don't know who I'm dogging on. Okay, now next, 
this is her arrest report for his DUI. Now let's talk about Ava. Oops, sorry. That was me. That <gasps> oh my was me, gosh. Sorry. Let's talk about Ava B. Lawrence. She's really cool. She's about to play a new superhero, which is kind of interesting because her superhero name is called Blaze. Why you ask? So she was like, oh my god, you've got such short fingernails. They look like you've been through some. Have you been biting them? Are you nervous about something? Are you nervous about this dead body that you might be connected to? And she said, no, here's the thing. I am actually playing a superhero called Blaze where I get to set out fire with my fingertips. Honestly, don't know what kind of bootleg superhero that is. She didn't even have fire coming out of her fingertips. She said she could set it out, like just turn off the fire. <laughs> I'm like, that's called first degree burns, bitch, but whatever. I guess they ran out of ideas at the studio. So she's Blaze and she does all the stunts. Which again, I'm just like really confused, but it's fictional, I guess. And so she does all the stunts, so that's why her fingers are like that. Now the reason she's ended up here is because she's addicted to cocaine. And the studio says, listen, listen, we got you out of jail. We got you out of all of this. Um, but you need to clean your act up or you can't work Where's with you? us anymore. She went to jail for leaving the scene of an accident, DUI, possession of cocaine, and evading the police. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Haha, but we're rich, so you're not gonna go to jail. Um, you're just gonna go to rehab. <laughs> and so they sent her to this rehab, and she seems somewhat connected to Christopher King because he was on to her. He tried to kind of like touch her during the group photo, and she pretended to slip and fall, step on his toe, and then knee him in the balls. And Ari, the security, witnessed this and he says again, I have done 20 years in Krav Maga, about 30 years of CrossFit, and I know when someone is trained in martial arts. She did not just fall. She knew what she was doing. Very suspicious. Wouldn't so you who say? did she kill? So she killed. Allegedly. She allegedly killed someone who was dropping off a little nose candy. That's what mm. the detective said. Nose candy. Because she's so addicted. Yeah. Based on what? Exactly. So we need to prove how the other woman got on the island, yes, right? Because is... on on this Captain Hook, this is who, everyone who was. <gasps> oh sh! Jesus Christ! This is Captain Hook. This is everyone that went on the boat to arrive at the island, and then the only person left it was the uh, security, Ari, and then there's only five left. So where is this extra woman come from? And how did she get on the island, right? I just found something. Okay. You know the number I just showed you? Yes, sir. I think I found it. What do you read it to me? CF8069. It's on a boat. Oh uh, my god, I just got the chills. She came on a f***ing boat. Wait, so there's a boat Wait, the with boat the same sink? number here, and then there's another boat here that they roll, which is <gasps> Captain Hook. Oh my god. So that's another boat with the wait, number. Wait, 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 they said that there was there was a storm, there was a lightning storm, and they thought that the lightning had caused the fire until the fire right. department came. So maybe, because you can see it's like wrecked over here, uh -huh. do you think the boat, it crashed into the crashed? Island? Because where's the boat? I just see a part of the number. Yeah, exactly. What happened to the boat? Let me see. So they says, okay, number one, you go onto their website to figure out the answers, right? How did Jane Doe get to the island? She swam from the mainland. No, it's 12 miles. She hid inside the Captain Hook. She was smuggled inside someone's luggage. She was already on the island when they arrived. She took a separate boat. Okay, let me try that one. Check answer. Maybe she was already on the yes. island. Yes, it says it's right. Wait, what is this? I need to insert what? two things. Insert two things. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Burned building, CSI photo, and wait, then... Wait, wait, what are you doing? I'm trying to see if it's right. How do you know? I just have to enter in these two pieces of evidence, and then they'll tell me if it's right. We solved it! Okay, so it says that this marina photo was taken 12 miles away from the island, right? Uh -huh. And then the island photo has a piece of the boat from the marina. This was a boat crash. Weird. And she took a boat alone and crashed it. Yeah. So then we have to open the next envelope. That's how cops do it. Who is Jane Doe? Oh, Whoa. there's two. Whoa, there's a scuba diving picture. Hold on. Oh my god. It's a whole plot. Wait, what? So oh, the what? ship had wrecked. So this evidence convinces the police that Jane Doe had taken the sailboat from the marina to Del Fuego Island. Uh -huh. And the boat sank offshore, okay? And they what? were able to get a dive team to go inside the boat and Ooh. they explored the area and they oh. discovered all of the stuff in that picture. And uh, yeah, they collected all of the stuff. 
So all of That's the stuff the was Jane Doe's. They couldn't find any forensic evidence such as saliva, fingerprints, or other DNA sources. So inside they found a flashlight, mm -hmm. a pocket knife, a money clip with cash, chunky bars and wrappers, a necklace, dental floss, Paula May's passion pink lip gloss. So she was the Paula brand ambassador. May. Yes, because th I also saw this newspaper has Paula May's ad on it too. So they had her passion pink lip gloss. Maybe Paula it was a fan May. or a paparazzi okay. or a fan, a stalker fan. A contact lens case, a compass, a bracelet jewelry with five aquamarine gemstones. Oh, inscribed on the back of the charm said, Happy birthday. It says, Happy birthday on her bracelet. Happy birthday? Yeah. Beef jerky. So it was a gift. Purple asthma inhaler. We are the same. Oh my god, you guys are the same. Okay, a Nintendo Game Boy. And then. <laughs> Oh my god, what the f is that? It's a hand. Whoa, what is that? It says there will be a boat with keys in it at the marina, two slips down from the one they take to the island called Captain Hook. Leave between 9 30 and 10 p.m. on April 22nd. Approach from due south, from the south, from due south to avoid dangerous rocks. That's all it is? This is the danger zone of the rocks. They said approach here. Okay, so this is the instruction that was given to her. Yeah, to Jane Doe to come to the island. So who would give someone instruction? I don't know, but it's a Paula May would not want the uh, want someone to find her. Yeah. And uh, Rob, Rob doesn't want doesn't reporter want. to find find him. What about an alcoholic? Oh, maybe he wants uh, the girl to come. The cocktail waitress. The cocktail waitress, or who's that? Ava. What does she want? Drugs. She wants drugs. And yes. Christopher King already said that he likes to have girlfriends come over, even though they're oh. not allowed. He has just a swarm of girls come in because okay. he'll go to the mainland and be like, "Hey, I'm on TV." Uh huh. So those three right now, yeah. right? And then, so right now we're trying to find out who the Jane Doe is. Yeah, so I have the missing persons list right here. The things that stand out for me are the, maybe, well, I don't think the dental floss. I mean, it's just, like, things that are inscribed. Like, the dental floss was inscribed, floss like a boss. That's a weird saying. I've never heard that saying before, floss like a boss. But you also say friends like cabbage, cheap like cabbage, kill them like cabbage. So... But floss like a boss? <laughs> Come on now. Floss like a boss. Okay, I think it has something to do with the asthma inhaler because I'm sure these missing oh, persons yeah, report has the health yeah, stuff on there. Yes. So the first woman is by the name of Jasmine Barstow. Jasmine Barstow, aka Jasmine. Jazzy. So last seen on June 16th, she was at a bonfire with some of her friends at Venice Beach. They saw her talking to a dark haired man. Uh -oh. Further down the beach for a while and she came back to the bonfire and told him she was going out on his boat and did not wait for her And then she disappeared. Okay, so jewelry. She had a puka shell necklace. What, what is the What's necklace? A puka sh Here's a necklace. Is it made out of puka shells? I don't know what puka shell is. You don't know what a puka shell is? What is a puka shell? This is a puka shell necklace. Like those like You know what I mean? Ah, Abercrombie. Abercrombie! <laughs> necklace and gold stud earrings. Anything? No, mm -mm. Okay, so she has a broken nose from a nasty volleyball spike. So I don't think broken, <gasps> broken nose. That could be asthma related. Because if you break your nose, mm, you can have a hard time breathing. Yeah. Okay, so then the next person is Maria. Okay. So Maria's connected to Christopher. Christopher. So she was last seen when she got fired and then didn't come home for the weekend. She's asthmatic. She has asthma and she's colorblind. Wow. She wears contact lenses. That said it had a contact case, oh, no? Yes. Oh, short. Is it really her? I don't that would know. make it too easy. So then the all? next person, Louisa May Lanaham, okay? She was last seen wearing black leggings. Mm -hmm. She got into a fight with her parents mm -hmm. and then she left a note saying she was leaving to pursue an acting career. She has asthma too. Where's contact lenses too? Honey, I guess your inhaler aren't, aren't that special. So I'm not unique is what you're saying? Okay, Emily Lynn Simpson. What does this sign mean, honey? What? On the necklace. What is this Let sign? Me see. It's gotta be a cult. I'm just kidding, I don't know. <laughs> Emma Lynn Simpson. She has an inhaler that she uses for anxiety attacks and asthma. Wow, I really ain't special, eh? I'm just kidding. So she wears contacts. Two. Those are not gonna be it then. Wait, she wanted to go into modeling in a big city. She has Paula May. Paula May was a model. I'm just saying. So they said no, she was really mad, and she saved up and bought a trip to LA so she could pursue her dreams. Blah 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 blah. What? 
Is this one of those zodiac signs or no? Zodiac sign. I'm not a zodiac sign expert, obviously. Oh my god! But if you guys sign. are, it is. Yeah, she's a Pisces. March 12th through April 18th. Is there a birthday on any of these people? Uh, it doesn't say on here. It just shows the day that they went missing. Oh my god! Date of birth March 11th, 1984. Who? Wait, this is who, who, who? Emmy Lynn Simpson. Emma Lynn Simpson, but hold on, they could all be like that. They could all have asthma and be born as a Pisces. She's February 21st, which means she's an Aquarius. Rose Kim is not it. Jasmine Lee Barstow is January 28th, so she's a Capricorn. Okay, so Maria. Maria Gonzalez is. What? She's a Leo. And then Miss Lanaham. She's a Pisces too. We've Pisces? got Emma Lynn something and Roger Lanaham. Louisa and Emma. Oh, so Emma right here, Louisa right here. Both yes. of them are the same zodiac sign. But it's gotta be the other one because Lanaham doesn't have asthma. Mm. So there's no reason she'd have an inhaler. So why would she go on the island? Who is she? Okay, she wanted to go into modeling in a big city and she had the Paula May lip gloss. And uh -huh. Paula May is a model. And her dad and I were against it because those places are full of questionable people. She was really mad at us about it too. It broke our hearts. So we saved up and bought us a trip to LA for a few weeks so she could pursue her dream. Only problem was we were holding out to tell her about it on her birthday tomorrow, which she left not knowing. And we think she left because she thought we were holding her back. My heart's in a million pieces. She left. She left. But she somebody gave away. her the instruction. Paula May would never give her the instruction to go. Maybe the counselor met her? And was like, I can make you a yeah. model oh. on TV. Maybe you can come to the island. Uh, okay, well let oh, me try. So Let's, maybe... we'll get, we don't even know if this is her. It's not her? Let me see. It is her. It is her? It is her. What does it say? Okay, what it says it you say? solved it. So she had aquamarine birthstones on her bracelet, which is March. And then Jane what? Doe also had an astrological symbol necklace charm for Pisces. Oh, so this bracelet is, is a month? That's insane. I didn't know that. Let so me look that's at birthstones. It? Yeah. Okay, that so month birthstones. I just want to verify. Yeah, March is aquamarine. But we wouldn't know that without the bracelet. We know it yeah. by the zodiac sign. Yeah, they do too, just in case. Ah. Uh, oh, we got an open B. This one's interesting. This is, See, mm. this one I feel like there's a flow. The first one there was no flow. I like the story on this one. Yeah. So far. Okay, now it says who was Emma Lynn yeah. going to see? Paula who May. Who was he going to see? No, I say I say Chris. So you think they're dating? No, maybe he's using the fact that she really wants to make it in Hollywood. Uh, so he's like, come here and meet me. There was talks about him starting his own TV show. Uh, As an addiction counselor, he was going to get his own show. That's but I just think here. that's too easy. Yeah, so it says, who was Emma Lynn going to see? So we've got some evidence. She was obsessed with Paula May because she'd been told so many times that she looked like Paula May. Wait, what, what are you reading right now? This is from PI. The parents hired a private investigator. So her source told her she was working for a shady character going by the name of Ari. Ari Cruz. Say that one more time. The PI looked into her and she went to Los Angeles and she started working for someone, a shady person by the name of Ari Cruz. His name's Ari, but he's not What's a suspect. What's his last name? You're a wits, but he's not a suspect. Apparently she was working as a cocktail waitress at a night. Club Cruz runs called Club Pyro. Fire. Cruz what? Ari Cruz, this, her boss runs. It's called Pyro. Oh. Which if you guys don't know, Pyro is someone who's obsessed with fire. She was using a fake ID to work there because she's obviously underage. They called Club Pyro and the manager knew her. Oh my God. Last I heard she was doing Ari a favor, but no one has seen her since. Why would she do her boss a favor? <gasps> Ari Cruz is involved in illegal gambling ring. And drug trafficking. Jesus, I feel like they're trying to make everybody <laughs> suspicious constantly. Okay, we've been rereading the shit out of everything, and I think I just found something. So I don't know if this is gonna work because it's spelled differently, but I, there's a fucking reason, okay? So this is Ava P. Lawrence. Before all of this, remember how I said that she got arrested for possession of cocaine and then driving under the influence, a hit and run, evading the police? Uh -huh, you get it, uh -huh. the whole spiel. I thought for some reason, just glancing over it the first time, that she was let go was because she was rich and she had the studio that was like, listen, you know, you gotta go to rehab instead. But no. it turns out she made a deal with the police that she was gonna wear a wire, a hidden wire, and purchase illegal narcotics from R.E. Cruz. And if you don't say R.E., 
R E Cruz. R E Cruz. Wait, 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 wait. Who is R E Cruz? R E Cruz is her drug dealer. And the reason that she didn't get jail time was because she told the police that she would wear a hidden audio recording device in respect to the activities of Rosa Elena Cruz. Her alias is R dot E. Cruz. And then the private investigator spelt it A R I, like Ari, like his name, like the Wait, security guard. Does that mean she's bu he's busted? That means he's not busted yet, but Ava was gonna How'd wear How'd you know he's not busted? I don't know. They say that it's not busted? Yeah, okay. because she's gonna wear a wire oh. to bust it. Oh, she hasn't done it yet. No. Then that means she's not okay. getting drugs from yeah, him. Yeah, so no, she is because they spent several years investigating Rosa Cruz for drug trafficking, but they can't secure a conviction until they find someone that's willing to wear a wire. You're saying that she's ordering drugs from him? Mm-hmm. And he sent... He, he sent, sent because... Emma Lynn Emma? works for him Doing at the club as a cocktail waitress. And then it also says- But why says, would she kill Emma? I don't know. But I thought she's gonna bust him. I mean, Ari Cruz, Ari Cruz is just pushing it. Okay? <laughs> okay, let me see if it works. Letter from private investor. Oh my God, it worked. No. Okay, it, no. Says, it says open envelope C. No! Are you I'm kidding kind me? of disappointed. It's a voluntary statement from Ava Lawrence. It's the fucking superhero? Yeah. Shocking news today. As world famous actress Ava B. Lawrence has confessed to murdering a 17 year old girl decades ago. On April 23rd, 2001, Officials found the remains of a murdered woman while investigating a fire on Del Fuego Island, a rehab facility 12 miles off the coast of L.A. Lawrence was on the island at the time and was a suspect, but police never identified the girl and the case was closed. But a recent team of investigators proved she was Emma Lynn Simpson, a 17-year-old runaway from Wisconsin. They also uncovered that Emma Lynn worked for Ava B. Lawrence's drug dealer. Once police learned of the connection between the two, what? Ava B. Lawrence was brought in for questioning. The statement, Emma Lynn was hired to take a boat to the island and deliver her drugs. But the boat sunk and she swam to shore. When Lawrence found out the drugs were lost, she accidentally killed her. She then dragged the body out of the and me? burned it down to hide. She killed a girl because the drug was lost in the water? Okay, let's read her statement. Let me just, let me just... Let me be a happy voice. I said, I had to do it. I had to get rid of the body, so I dragged her into the water, but the waves just kept washing her back onto the shore. I couldn't risk it. Then I thought of the lighter and the gas. Oh my god, I'm so disappointed at this. She flew into a rage, shaking her violently and calling her every name in the book. That poor young girl was so scared, but I didn't care. She tried to run, but I caught her. She tried to fight me off at that point, but as soon as she started screaming, I kicked her square in the chest and she went down instantly. Why is she killing her? In She's anger? She's mad that she couldn't get her little sniffly stuff, you know what I mean? All these people are so much more suspicious. They have so much more motive to kill someone. Okay, let me just run down. We could have said that she she was aspiring to be Paula May. She sees her and you know, Emma Lynn went there and she's like, Paula, I knew you were gonna be here and I knew this was the only time that I could get you alone and I just want to say I'm such a big fan and everyone says that I look like you and I just wish that you could be my mentor. And Paula May says, uh-uh, not you being a younger, younger, skinnier version of me. Ba -ba! And then kills her. That's a better Paula. That's a better Paula. Rob Knox, okay, Rob. Knox. He gambled. The owner is the owner of Club Pyro. Or maybe he had all of the security stuff at mm. Club Pyro and some shit went down at Club Pyro and now he's held for it and he's like, listen, it's okay. I'll pay for the lawsuit. I'll pay for it. And then he started gambling again and then some shit went down and then they sent her to tell him, hey, your time's up, little buddy. Give us our money or you're dead. And he was like, no, I can't be dead. And then killed her. And then Jack Danner, he was just like cocktail waitress. And then she was like, no. And then he was like, what's consent? Bah, bah. And then we've got Ava B. Lawrence. Storyline, bro. And then we've got Christopher King. Oh, that's the most complicated storyline. He could have been like, listen, I'm gonna make you a star, baby girl. Are you lost, baby girl? I'm gonna make you a star. Bah, bah. Why? Because he's weird. <laughs> so what happened to Maria? Maria's just dead, I guess. I don't know. I think Christopher killed her. Yeah. 
See, this case was so fun and just like flat. It's like you open up a bottle of sparkling water and you hear the sizzle and you're so freaking excited, right? And then you drink it a little. Bubbles, ooh, good, hits the spot. You drink some what? more. Bubbles, ooh, hits the spot. And then you come back in an hour after you've done all of this shit and you take a sip, fucking flat, fucking flat, dude. So, um, oh. that's the story of Jane Doe. Oh. Oh. See, we thought maybe this one would be better, so we gave it another shot for you guys. If you guys know any other companies that make stuff like this, please let it's us know. It's so good, like, but the ending. Yes. Oh, the ending. So much potential. So much potential. I'm tired. You know what they say about being a case solving detective? You know what they say about a YouTuber who is pretending to be a detective but isn't really a detective? What? Do you know what they say? What is that? Subscribe. Today's work was hard, but we've only just begun. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Hit that like button. And let me know if you guys want a part three. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's Unsolved Mysteries. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.